For those of you just joining us, there is a pileup on southbound I-75 near Springwells. This is over the Rouge River, and Rob Rossi from NDOT is on the phone with us right now. So you're saying a semi lost its load, and that's what triggered this pileup. We initially heard maybe 15 vehicles were involved. How many are you hearing now? Well, I'm hearing it could be up to about 30 at this point in time. Um, I'm not really sure what caused the crash, and that, that, that'll be information that'll come out later. Sure. But I do know that semi, uh, there were trucks involved. I think one lost its load. And when you have a situation like that, you have people slamming on the brakes, you have icy conditions. And again, it's just this type of winter driving. We have snow squalls that were coming through the area, very cold temperatures, wind. It just leads to a lot of ice buildup because, as you know, Alicia, salt's just not effective when to where they're Breaking news alert from 7 Action News. Good morning, everyone. More on our breaking news into the Action Newsroom. There has been a massive pileup on southbound I-75 after Springwells. That's in southwest Detroit. Dozens of vehicles are involved in this wreck. Several of them are big rigs. We're hearing that there are several injuries as well. And just a short time ago, northbound traffic on I-75 was shut down as well. So southbound shut down at Springwells, northbound at Schaefer has been shut down. That's to allow emergency crews to get closer to the scene. We've got a new precaution out there on the scene right now. Anu, tell us what you see and what you can tell us. Well, Joanne, talk about a total mess. I want to show you where we are right now. We're just two miles north of the Fort Street exit. If you look behind me here, you can see southbound traffic not moving at all. And as you mentioned, northbound traffic, it is closed as well, so there's nothing going on right here. But I want you to look at, they've got these emergency vehicles here. You can see the fire department. I was trying to wave one of the firefighters over here, but um, he couldn't get over to me right now. If you look past that fire truck, you can see some firefighters are actually going car to car to check on people in the car, perhaps let them know what's going on. This all happened just shortly after 9 o'clock this morning, I-75 southbound between Dearborn and Springwells. We are told by MDOT that at least two dozen up to 30 vehicles involved in some sort of train reaction crash. Right now, we don't know what exactly caused it, but we're told at least one semi truck, a commercial truck, lost it's load. We do not know what it was carrying. At this point, we have not heard anything about any injuries. We know that they are trying to get EMS vehicles down here, get them closer to the scene. Basically, what happened was um, the roads were pretty much completely clear, and there was a very light snowfall, and then in an instant, there was literally zero visibility. You couldn't see anything in front of you. And the the, from what, where I'm sitting right now, the three semi trucks that I can see that are blocking in front of me, um, they're completely white. So as the cars started to run into each other, when the zero visibility hit, the only reason that I even knew that the cars were colliding was because the vehicle that ran into one of them was like a maroon covered colored Cadillac. Yeah. And that's when I realized, oh my gosh, they're running into each other. And I went towards the um, the cement um, barrier on the, the side of the road. Sarah, what goes through your mind when you're involved in something like this and seeing it and hearing it? It was it was absolutely awful. My first instinct was, I obviously, I, I stepped on the brakes, but, I mean, my, my dad taught me well, so I didn't, you know, you know, slam on my brakes, but as I started to touch them, I realized, oh my God, the, the road is icy. And as I looked up, that's when I realized that the cars were colliding and I thought, just do anything I can to, first of all, not run into somebody else, but obviously to not, you know, to not, you know, get hit. So you were okay. What can you tell us about your awareness of any injuries or any casualties or anything? Are you aware? What have you, what have you been seeing? Um, I would actually really, uh, I'd rather not talk about that, to be honest. Um, I got out of my vehicle once I realized that the cars had jackknifed and I saw a vehicle, which I would prefer not to mention to make model or color in case that there was a casualty. But someone had mentioned to me that their spouse and possibly children were in their vehicle. And when I went over to look, um, no one was responsive. So um, I went back into my vehicle. Uh, can you tell and me? They're, uh, they're still in the process because they've cleared the vehicles in front of them now, and I can actually see that car. Um, they're still in the process of, it looks like, extracting people from that vehicle. They are. They are. Yes. Reporters on the scene, of course, covering this massive wreck on I-75. Southbound near Springwells. Tara and Ambulance just going by on behind you. Where are you, and what can you tell us? 
Well, Joanne, right now we are right along I-75 near Spring Wells, and we just want to show you how massive this accident is. We want to be careful because there is a crash right behind us, and we're told that there's actually somebody still in there. So, but you can just see if we go down this road, how many cars, there's semis involved, there's many accidents, multiple accidents throughout the stretch of I-75. There's even a semi behind us with a bunch of cars piled on top of that. And to show you how many first responders are out here, if we take a look down here, this is closer to Springwells, you will see how many fire trucks are out here, ambulance out here, first responders, many people working as quickly as they can to help get as many people out and into safety. We just saw an ambulance go by, as you mentioned, taking people to the hospital. And also right now we want to talk to Kelly Strover. She lives right down the street from where the accident happened. She heard all the ambulances earlier today. Tell me what you saw when you came out here. I just seen the traffic backed up and ambulances like many, many emergency vehicles coming more than I've ever seen, you know, and it's a lot. It's a lot. It's pretty scary to see all this out here this morning. Yeah, right outside my window. You know, I live right on the service drive, you know, and it's terrific you know it was a, you know i looked out the window around 9 9 30 and it, it was like a whiteout it was a white like whiteout and about quarter to ten i looked back out and it was no more snow and then i heard you know the siren Just getting our first chopper pictures now weather kept chopper from going up this morning but we uh we are getting video from chopper seven now of the accident we had heard captain and i know you just mentioned that you were talking to people um can you tell me are you indeed going car to car and talking to each person um those who are doing okay to find out what happened and to make sure that they're okay kind of before they're allowed to say clear the scene or leave the scene with family members or whatnot Right. We need to find out who uh, who's involved in the accident because to try to find this out at a later time would be nearly impossible. So we'll go car to car where obviously you triage the injuries, you get the serious injuries to the hospital, and we can talk to those people later. Uh, but those are on the scene. We'll get their information. We'll try to get them uh, out of there. As you can see, I'm looking on the news, and it's uh, it's going to be quite a while before we can uh, clear up all those tractor trailers. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an all-day process to get this cleared up. Certainly, um, conditions at the time we're here. Were, were you know snowy and the snow squall moving through that's what you're hearing as well as the as the cause of this right there was a, a huge snow squall that came through probably only lasted 15 to 20 seconds but it oh. uh, pretty much took everybody's uh, sight away and from there on you have nothing uh, but a, a, a collision or something from that point look at that that shot there from uh, chopper 7 with all those tractor trailers and the cars kind of sandwiched in between and you know you can't say it enough I mean a 15 to 20 second snow squall boom it came, whiteout conditions, and then this is the result. Uh, we've been, some of us have enjoyed 50 degree temperatures. We've seen the snow go away, but it has been really a wild mix of weather uh, for the last few weeks. And as soon as that winter returned, it returned hard, it returned heavy, and it claimed lives this morning. Yeah, so sad. Three lives, three or four lives, excuse me, three children and one adult in this accident. This is a closer view of the general vicinity of the accident. I've been showing this because I want you to see this is the perfect example we talk about systems coming in that means widespread snow but if we talk about lake effect what you need to know is these conditions change rapidly and pretty much out of nowhere is what we say because look at this 8 30 no problems 8 45 no problems nine o'clock here it comes that snow squall and we're talking about visibility drops from 10 or 8 mile visibility down to zero in a matter of 15 minutes i go ahead and put the radar in motion a little bit more we're out of it by 9:30, only 15 minutes. That's all it takes. Right, tell us what happened this morning. Well, it was uh, I was coming southbound on I-75, uh, doing uh, the speed limit. All of a sudden, uh, when I got past Springwell, there, a whiteout hit real hard. I could see people running into one another, uh, crashing into one another. I stopped as soon as I could. I could hear the smashing and banging going on behind me. And um, I got out to see if I could aid and help any of the injured because I knew there would be with this amount of damage today. So it was uh, quite a mess. Seeing this is just beyond understanding. I, I'm very thankful. <laughs> absolutely horrible for all the families out there. I managed to get up to the barricade and found my husband's car and I pointed to it and I said, can you just please have him wave out the window? And he actually came out of the vehicle and waved and said, I'm okay. 
And again, that woman is now with her husband. Just, you know, fortunately, he was not injured, although, unfortunately, there were lots of injuries. Lots of people had to be taken to the hospital. And um, we will continue to stay out here all day and bring you more information on this in later editions of 7 Action News.